in any normal race, I think he, I would not even consider him a, a, a threat because he lost like 10, 12 minutes to the front in the swim. Seb is in front. <laughs> Pretty confident I will outrun him uh, at Sombe Hill. It's going to be the most interesting part. <laughs> if I make this, I will be incredibly proud. Uh, hopefully, it will be a really close battle. The Norseman Extreme Triathlon, dubbed the toughest triathlon in the world. Everything about this event is crazy. A 3.8 kilometer swim, starting by jumping off the back of a ferry in the early hours into the freezing waters of a fjord. A 180 kilometer bike leg with almost 3,000 meters of elevation gain. And a marathon to finish, which climbs to over 1,800 meters above sea level. Not to mention the drastically interchangeable weather. This event is as tough and raw as they come. Not the kind of place you would expect to see this guy. Hello, my name is Sebastian Kienle. I'm from Germany. I'm 39 years old. I am doing the sport for 31 years now. This is my final year in the sport. Um, I've won three world titles in, uh, in Ironman, long course and the middle distance racing, but I've never done Norseman. And of course, my goal is to win the race. So who do you think is your biggest rival? Uh, I just know one guy, um, and that's uh, John Breivold. Uh, my name is Jon Breivold. I'm 28 years old, and uh, I'm a professional triathlete uh, from Norway. Um, I've only been doing triathlon for three years. I used to be a cyclist at the uh, continental level, but I switched to triathlon just to pursue the dream of Norseman, actually. Having Sebastian race here is uh, it's really quite special. Uh, he's one of the biggest leg legends in the sport and just having him to race here uh, and going against him in this course, it's going to be really special. He was sixth in Kona last year. Yeah, I think I need to be just at my best uh, level and um, uh, have the most energy left when we are arriving at uh, Zombie Hill. I think that's my territory. Seems like we're too late. You need your swim cap. You need your goggles. And uh, preferably a wetsuit. <laughs> and time in shape. It all starts with the jump from the ferry, a little bit before five o'clock in the morning. And, uh, the ferry horn goes off and then it all starts with the swim. Uh, we just follow the shore uh, until we get into Eidfjord, so it's, it's quite easy to swim, it's not technical. Uh, and then we take a sharp left turn uh, and we swim for about uh, 500 meters and then we're into T1. There's also a lot of 
reasons why I believe I can beat John. I mean, he lost like 10, 12 minutes to the front in the swim in Switzerland, Ironman Switzerland. So on the swim, I think uh, Sebastian will probably be around five minutes before me uh, if I have a good swim and get some good legs to, to be on on the swim. So we've got two athletes coming out here who've got a little bit of a breakaway and I believe there's a third athlete somewhat behind them and then another big gap. Our lead athletes coming out of the water now. And that is Sebastian Gienli, first out of the water. Just see some more swimmers here coming around the corner. So fourth out of the way at water there in the Quintana Roo wetsuit. That was Jan Bravold, who is the reigning champion on this course. Probably we'll catch Sebastian before we do it. That would be the ideal situation. Uh, and if I haven't uh, catched him before Imingfjell, that's where I will put in the most power. Oh no, Braveold is behind him. Here is number one. It's not. Fa it's only five minutes. Yeah. Okay. So he he lost his bottle, going a bit out of uh, the original plan. But uh, yeah, hope is uh, not. Uh, stressed about that uh, lost uh, bottle. We're just looking down the road behind us here. We can see the first cyclist just coming up to this point. It's been one minute. So Jan Bravold, Norwegian athlete, two times winner on this course, just coming up here now. It looks like his gap is a little large this time, about one minute, 24 seconds behind Sebastian. We missed the right of the bottom a little bit now. Yeah. It looks like we're struggling a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, a little bit. Change is so fast. really get a sense of here actually of that lonely athlete in a big landscape and this isn't just any old triathlon this is an adventure in the mountain What makes this bike course really tough, first of all, it takes so much longer. You know, I mean, this is not a bike course that you finish in four hours. This is not a bike course that you finish in four hours. It's, that makes it tough because it's longer. You have, just have to uh, push for so much longer. I think that's what the people are looking for when they signed up for the race here. They want to, uh, be pushed to their limits and they will push to their limits. So we start in at zero at the sea level and we go up to, I think it is 1,200 meters above sea level. And the gradients are shifting a little bit, but uh, at some point, points it's about maybe seven, eight percent. Uh, so a bit steep in some parts and other parts are a little bit more flat, but uh, in total maybe five percent average. And when you come up to Dyranut, then you get to the flat, flat part of Norseman, which is uh, you're going uh, from Dyranut to, to Jailo. It's about uh, 40, 45 k or something, uh, where it's slightly downhill all the way. And there are some rolling hills, but uh, 
yeah, mostly downhill and it will be a really fast section of the race. I know the course quite uh, quite well, I would say, especially the like the middle part of the cycling because I have my family cottage there. So I've been there several times and been biking up up the mountain of Imingfjell. That's my territory and uh, my favorite uh, uh, part of this race probably. <laughs> lost another uh, of his uh, aero buffles on his back and uh, now we only have Well, uh, Breivold caught up to Zibi, so, uh, so they're riding together. So now the mind game start, uh, the tactics probably, everybody has, uh, has his own tactics. Uh, I think Zibi should not go to the front because he's not the favorite. Breivold knows the course, he, kept, he was catching up, so, so he, he has to make the race. He's the favorite, this is, he has to get used to that. And it will be interesting um, how this pans out, the last climb. Um, Breivold, maybe he wants to get rid of him, maybe he wants to, you know, save his legs, go with Sibi onto the run and then attack, we'll see. Uh, yeah, it's a really tight race, it's uh, what we wished for actually. I just hope in the end Sibi is on the top. on the switchbacks behind us, our first leading athlete just coming up the road here. This is Jan Breivold, who holds the course record, making it up this really very steep hill with ease, so not looking like it's troubling him too much. Um, Sebastian Kianli probably not too far behind him, playing cat and mouse it seems with Jan Breivold in the mountains today. I think my chances are quite good when it comes to the run. Um, I'm quite confident in my run. I did a 2.45 run, uh, third best run in Ironman Switzerland. So uh, and that was completely flat, so I can run quite well in the flat. And uh, I've trained a lot in, uh, with, um, during my entire life. I've been training a lot in hills and doing hill running. And I know that I have a good capacity for running uphill. So if I manage to arrive in Zumbi Hill with sufficient energy stores, then I'm pretty confident I will outrun him uh, up there. Here is Sebastian Kenley coming through and headed out onto the run. I was uh, really feeling the stomach. Uh, 
A little too much on uh, a little too many gels, I think, and uh, his stomach is not uh, very comf comfortable. But uh, I think uh, with some water and uh, not so many gels, the next uh, 10 k's, and it will be okay. But Christopher, uh, how are you doing? Good. Needed a toilet break, a big toilet toilet break. So uh, we hope some coke will fix it and uh, coke water, coke, and then uh, it should be fine. But uh, if the energy levels uh, going down, it's it's not good because uh, it still needs to fuel and uh, top up the energy levels. So. Uh, the stomach uh, is not good for you. His uh, gels just uh, going straight through his body, and uh, I will not get it. But his uh, yeah. yeah, the speed is not that bad. But uh, I think he's feeling the, the stress on the stomach. Pretty much all long course races are about and this one especially is that it brings you to a point where you don't want to do it anymore and I think that's basically the perfect um, will breaker. I think uh, if you see that that road and yeah it's the, the ultimate test because usually at that point you get tired in a race like you get really tired and you don't want to do it anymore. It's just you try to find some mental tricks to get yourself going, but um, this is even worse because, yeah, uh, you basically run out of gas and then somebody puts on the handbrake and puts yourself on a very steep hill. <laughs> um, the only thing that stops you from rolling down again is that handbrake. <laughs> but when you want to go up, no fuel, handbrake on and very steep, you have to push pretty hard. Uh, with the stomach? Yeah. Yeah, it's getting better. Okay, good. But four breaks now. Oh, wow. So if I make this, I will be incredibly proud. And yeah, the team. Doing an amazing job. So you're looking really good, mate. Very good. Yeah, I'll try to keep up the pace. The organisers have had to take the really difficult decision now to close the mountain for the rest of the day. It's not safe to allow our athletes, our supporters and our crew of the mountain today. We'll just carry on straight back up to the end of the mountain where they would usually ascend and then come straight back down here to our alternative finish line. So 
and Brave Holm has fought an amazing race today in sun, rain, now thunderstorms to reach this point at the end of our Ironman distance Norseman 2023 race. We're just going to take in these sights for a minute as he comes to our finish line. Here he is. Uh, I think everything that I expected uh, from the race was pretty much happening. Um, I think we had pretty good conditions most of the, the time. Unfortunately, uh, when we approached the very final part, the conditions were not too good. And I mean, there's always a small mod margin between just hard and uh, dangerous and stupid. Unfortunately, it was on the dangerous and stupid uh, side, so therefore uh, uh, my uh, black t-shirt has some white spots on it because I wasn't at the very top, but I can assure you this last 4K downhill were probably even worse than, uh, um, than the last bit up, up uh, the, the mountain. What makes the race hard for professionals is the competition. And for me, therefore, it was very, very tough because I had very good competition. But still, when I heard the first gap of like a minute 20 after the climb, I was like, okay, this is gonna be a tough ask. And, um, but I had really good legs. I mean, I didn't have a bad day on the bike. I mean, I completely emptied the tank actually at like 150K into the bike because I just tried to stay with him at one point. It was pretty, uh, clear that it's between me and him and uh, I knew that it's not it's not on a long run it's either like I'm able to stay with him and then really put pressure on him on the run or it's over so uh, the last climb was I mean really really strong from him I mean that's also the reason why I say this because for me the last climb um, so there's four climbs, they are round about between 3 and 4k long. Average of maybe 7% or so in climb and the last one is maybe a little bit steeper. And I had maybe 6-7 minutes of like 360-370 watts and that's four and a half uh, hours into the, into the race or for, for 10, 15 probably into the race. So. If you are able to, to put that amount of power that late in the race, that's, I mean, he definitely deserved this win. I think if it would be time trial triathlon, so everybody starting on his own, and it would be a, the world championships in Nice, this guy would be uh, top five for sure. Um, I mean, he has a deadly uh, run, uh, bike combination that's for sure and I think he had a decent swim uh, yesterday so yeah. Normally in Norseman I just uh, I have a plan uh, on what power I should produce and what pace I should run at and I just do my own race uh, but this time with the battle between me and uh, Sebi it was a bit different uh, and especially since I was so close after the swim only a little bit more than three minutes behind then things changed completely and I and I plan to actually catch him before on the first climb before Dyrandu to, to just, uh, yeah, uh, don't lose any time on the fast sections where I knew that he would be quite fast. Uh, and when I finally overtook him, uh, not on Dyrandu, but uh, after about 100k, uh, then he just stayed on my wheel. And uh, I tried to go a, bit, a little bit fast, but I understood that uh, he doesn't plan to do his own race. Uh, he will just stick to my wheel as uh, long as possible. So yeah, then I had to change things uh, during the race. And that's different than uh, what I normally do in Norseman. Uh, you know, he's a superstar uh, in this sport. Uh, it's probably only Jan Froden who has like a bigger name and probably like Christian Blumenfeld, you know? Uh, so yeah that he was just co coming and race Norseman. That was great, uh, great for me and to be able to beat him. I mean, I will still stay in the sport in uh, uh, one way or the other, definitely not as an athlete, but um, maybe you hear me behind the mic um, every now and then um, for, for German TV uh, probably. And then obviously um, I will do some gravel races next year, but first I need a break to forget all this pain and 
that I'm gonna hit the gas when I see the wall instead of hitting the brakes because that's what more and more is happening right now. It's just, I'm afraid of what's coming or my body just remembers. <laughs> and therefore it's quite tough to uh, like squeeze like this every single percent out of my legs. Therefore the legs feel good the day after that, but that's not what you want, right? Um, and then uh, I will uh, be involved in uh, kick-ass sports. Um, the coaching company I have with uh, Philip Seid and Laura Philip, I'll do a little bit more there. And then uh, I'll see my son somewhere in the backdrop. I probably have to become a little bit of a firefighter or something like that to be his hero. I mean, that's the ultimate goal of every dad is um, being the hero of the son. And I'm not sure if he was too impressed of my performance yesterday. <laughs> so therefore, maybe I have to you know, um, become an uh, operator of a big digger or something like that, yeah.